Hi, I want to talk about understanding and the nature of understanding and what uh, the essence of understanding is. Because understanding is something we aim for, everyone. We, own, we want to understand things. My claim is that understanding has to do with the ability to change your perspective. If you don't have that, you don't have understanding. So that is my claim. And I want to focus on mathematics. Many of us think of mathematics as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, percent, geometry, algebra, all that stuff. But actually, I want to talk about the essence of mathematics as well. And my claim is that mathematics has to do with patterns. Behind me, you see a beautiful pattern. And this pattern actually emerges just from drawing circles in a very particular way. So my day-to-day -day definition of mathematics that I use every day is the following. First of all, it is about finding patterns. And with a pattern, I mean a connection, um, a structure, uh, some regularity, some rules that govern what we see. Second of all, I think it is about representing these patterns with a language. We make up language if we don't have it. And in mathematics, this is essential. It's also about making assumptions and playing around with these assumptions and just seeing what happens. And we're going to do that very soon. And finally, it's about doing cool stuff. <laughs> mathematics enables us to do so many things. So let's have a look at these patterns. If you want to tie a tie knot, there are patterns. Tie knots have names. And you can also do the mathematics of tie knots. This is a left out, right in, center out and tie. This is a left in, right out, uh, left in, center out and tie. This is a language we made up for the patterns of tie knots. And a half winter is all that. <laughs> this is a mathematics book about tying shoelaces at the university level, because there are patterns in shoelaces. You can do it in so many different ways. We can analyze it, we can make up languages for it. And representations is all over mathematics. This is Leibniz's notation from 1675. He invented a language for patterns in nature. When we throw something up in the air, it falls down. Why? We're not sure, but we can represent this with mathematics in a pattern. This is also a pattern. Uh, this, is, this is also a, an invented language. And uh, can you guess for what? It is actually a notation system for dancing, for tap dancing. And that enables him, as a choreographer, to do cool stuff, to do new things, because he has represented it. And I want you to think about how amazing representing something actually is. Here it says the word mathematics. But actually, they're just dots, right? So how in the world can these dots represent the word? Well, they do. They represent the word mathematics. And these symbols also represent that word. And this we can listen to. It sounds like this. Somehow these sounds represent a word and a concept. How does this happen? And there's something amazing going on about representing stuff. So I want to talk about um, that magic that happens when we actually represent something. Here you see just uh, lines, right, with different width. They stand for numbers for a particular book. And I can actually recommend this book. It's a, it's a very nice book. Just <laughs> trust me. Okay, so let's just do an experiment. Just play around with some straight lines. This is, is a straight line. Let's make another one. So every time we move, uh, we move one down and one across, and we, we draw a new straight line, right? So we do this over and over and over, and we look for patterns. So this pattern emerges, and it's a rather a nice pattern. It looks like a curve, right? Just from drawing simple straight lines. Now I can change my perspective a little bit. I can rotate it. And then have a look at the curve. You know, what does it look like? Is it, a, is it a part of a circle? It's actually not the part of a circle. So I have to continue my investigation and look for, you know, the true pattern. Now, perhaps if I copy it and make some art, uh, well, no. Perhaps I should extend the lines like this and look for the pattern there. And let's make more lines. We do this. And then let's just zoom out and uh, change our perspective again. And then we can actually see that what started out as just straight lines is actually a curve called the parabola. This is represented by a simple equation, and it's a beautiful pattern. So this is the stuff that we do. 
we, we find patterns and we represent them. And I think this is a nice day-to-day -day definition. But today I want to go a little bit deeper and think about um, what is the nature of, of this? What makes it possible? And there's one thing that's a little bit deeper, and that has to do with the ability to change your perspective. And I claim that when you change your perspective, and if you take another point of view, uh, you learn something new about what you are uh, watching, or looking at, or hearing. And I think this is a really important uh, thing that we do all the time. So let's just uh, do, um, uh, look at this simple equation, like x plus x equals 2 times x. This is a very nice pattern, and it's true, because 5 plus 5 equals 2 times 5, etc. And we've seen this over and over, and we represent it like this. But think about it. This is an equation. It says that something is equal to something else. And that's two different perspectives. One perspective is, it's a sum. It's something you plus together. On the other hand, it's a multiplication. And those are two different perspectives. And I would go as far as to say that every equation is like this. Every mathematical equation where you use that sign, that equality sign, is actually a metaphor. It's an analogy between two things. You're just viewing something and taking two different points of view. And you're expressing that in a language. 